Oh, hi there. Uh, good morning. I wanted to talk about, uh, well, the Ukrainian-Russian uh, war that is uh, going on. Um, there's a lot of propaganda floating around. And I mean, what is the exact specific definition of that? Well, anyways, uh, it's not all that it seems. And you can't take every single piece of information and go, that's propaganda because it's meant to deceive, lie, and manipulate people into believing a certain set of um, circumstances. Um, there is footage. Uh, if you look on YouTube and other sources um, that uh, make certain claims or that uh, show some video footage and the thing about um, Ukrainians is that a lot of them actually do speak Russian and uh, it's a Slavic nation uh, same as, uh, as Russia um, if you are not well traversed in that, um, that particular area it can be very difficult to distinguish the difference between um, a Russian and a Ukrainian, um, especially in my area where there isn't a very large population of uh, either of these uh, nationalities. Uh, there's some, but there's not a large population. So your average Joe around these parts is going to have a hard time distinguishing the difference. Um, therefore, propaganda can be made that is more effective, and it will deceive the, uh, you know, uh, sp well, I won't say stupid people, but, uh, you know, people who just don't know things about the world. And, um, there's, uh, a few videos out there that are floating around of, uh, of Russian POWs and they're saying their name and what unit they were part of and um, although I do think the uh, Ukrainians perhaps have apprehended a few uh, Russian soldiers had they even done that um, is a question uh, it also is that um, if they did do it there's no way they would broadcast that on any network um, what they would do is create a um, another video specifically for the general public to see. And, you know, it would be more likely that that's what they did, that they, they grabbed some Ukrainians, put them in uh, seemingly very similar Russian uniforms, um, and got them to say what they needed them to say. Um, because a lot of things are undecided uh, so far in this uh, military action. It is likely that um, the small cities that have been taken by the Russians um, will remain in uh, Russian-controlled areas uh, for the, you know, uh, distant future. I don't see how uh, Putin can win this war necessarily. Um, it, in the sense of conquering all of Ukraine and that's it, um, because, uh, Zelensky, uh, had said that he was still in, uh, in Ukraine. He said he was still in Kiev. There was a video the other day of him, uh, using a cell phone to make a video. Um, this I don't think is true. Um, and a lot of people don't understand. They think, oh, well, if he leaves the country, he's a big old coward and, you know, this, that, and the other. No, he is a political leader who was, well, I mean, you could say he ran away, but he was exiled uh, by the threat of his country being completely controlled by the Russian Federation. And therefore, he can continue uh, the, uh, the fight as he leaves, similar to how de Gaulle continued the fight for the French, the free French, 
um, back in World War II. Um, because uh, it would be a great prize for the Russians to apprehend Zelensky. He was he was good at his job at being a prick to the Russians. Um, and him and his top staff are, I just, I really don't see them being anywhere near the conflict zone. And so that video was propaganda. That was meant to, um, give confidence to, you know, the Ukrainian militias and soldiers that are fighting against the Russians. And, you know, you need that little cheer me up, that boost, um, you know, when you're, you know, shit in your pants in a foxhole or behind uh, some rubble and, you know, you don't have nearly enough equipment or a long-term solution to the problem. Um, it's, uh, you know, they have to believe that their leader is there, but he can't be there because he's too big a prize uh, for the uh, for the Russians to have. And uh, getting back to the POWs that uh, both sides claim they have POWs. They probably do, but uh, no way of knowing. Those videos are not conclusive. Um, the video I saw on the, on the other side was that Russia had apprehended some Ukrainian soldiers. Now, depending on the level of how much of a problem these Ukrainian soldiers were or what they were able to give as, way, as information... Uh, what kind of equipment they were using, uh, what rank, and all this other sort of stuff uh, will affect how the Russians treat the POWs. But let's just face facts. POWs do not get treated great. They get treated very, very, very bad. So this video I saw, I think it was an RT video, um, Russia Today, and it, uh, it was, you know, it's very slanted for the Russian side. Anyway, it shows the Ukrainians uh, being given water and a little tin of food and them being, you know, put on a bus and they'd be going home soon. Um, I don't believe it at all. <laughs> uh, you know, even if they didn't do anything, if they didn't give Russia anything, then, you know, the Russians have to make an example. And that would probably mean, you know, prison for a year or so, um, which would not be fun. Because um, a lot of people, they figure, well, Russia is disarming, denazifying, as some people would call it, the hostile right of uh, right wing of the Ukraine. Um and that's part of the reason why they've invaded Ukraine in the first place. Um, the, the problem with this mentality is that um, it's not the complete story. Uh, yes, those factions do exist in the Ukraine, but a lot of this has to do with economics. Uh, the Russian economy is stagnant, and it having the Black Sea entirely without any Ukrainian forces there uh, would be a serious boost for the Russian economy because their economy is not doing too well. Anyway. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, it uh, does not bode well for some people uh, who live on that part of the world because they're just in a shitty situation. Um... Yeah, um, there's a lot of yeah, this propaganda over here about how the whole world believes that uh, Russia is in the wrong. Well, that's what the media says in the West, uh, because it's kind of hard to justify a war, because everyone associates that with really bad stuff, which is true. But, um, you know, sometimes uh, there are, like, really solid reasons for it. Um, Russia is a very paranoid country. Uh, they always have been. And, uh, you know, it really 
does, you know, look like that uh, the world's closing in on them. Their world's getting smaller. They're getting economically weaker. And, um, you know, uh, they uh, had to shake things up and start some shit. Or else, you know, they were just going to get squeezed and squeezed and squeezed until they were, you know, they just, uh, you know, were another, they were themselves a puppet state of a, um, of a, of, of the world. Uh, not really in control of its own destiny, not an empire. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, uh, well, I try to look at both sides of the story because I don't think either side's telling the truth, but I do find Russian propaganda to be highly obnoxious and very annoying. Um, their, their grasp on, um, philosophy, uh, and ideological beliefs, um, I think there's uh, some sort of um, it, it's definitely a bridge because uh, they don't exactly think the same way uh, because of their language and, and what's you know their reality as do most Westerners. We we you know you say something to you know in conversation with these types of uh, scenarios with them and they don't understand because some things mean different things to different people. Quite often that's the case, so, you know, you may not understand things about them and then make a statement and they think you mean something else, but you didn't mean that, you meant something else. Uh, and this is where propaganda, you know, it plays that pivotal point where um, if you understand the philosophies of others, then you can pitch a story that sounds plausible uh, and sounds like the truth. And as I happen to know, the internet and television and most other news outlets, like maybe a newspaper or something, they all lie. That's, that's the way it is. It's all lies. Um, especially if it has anything to do with anything like money or, you know, in this case, war or, you know, any of that sort of stuff. It's always, you know, there might be a bit of truth in there to, you know, sort of make it kind of look like something. But at the end of the day, the pivotal points, if you can't see it for yourself, then it's probably a lie. And there's no way you can, you're going to hear the entire story of it without running into lies that sound like the truth all the way through. Um, and you could be falsely believing things that are simply not true but they sound convincing to you so that's why you thought it was true um yeah and i mean it can get it can get quite uh, hairy uh in uh those type of scenarios uh in particular for them right now and um you know they're not gonna show that footage and there's solid reasons for that too i mean a lot of that sort of stuff happened in uh, in the Vietnam War with the Americans. Uh, that stuff got put on TV and, you know, people took it real seriously. And that's not what the propaganda apparatus wants. It wants people to function in society, kind of be aware of it, and um, just keep on, you know, going through it. You know, some people have the luxury of not even having to think about it. But, um, you know, or they consider that a luxury to not be able to think about it. But guys like me, you know, I find stories like this to be, you know, quite fascinating. Uh, you know, I didn't say it was a good thing. It's not, but it is a, something that is very, very interesting. And, um, you know, there's definitely some things about it that, I believe that are possibly not true uh, because I don't have access to all the media information. I have, you know, been looking for uh, some information here and there 
on the internet that sounds plausible, but as I told you with the example of the POWs that were interviewed, that's to say, look, the Ukrainian army is being successful in this regard. So it's worth faking videos like that for that country. Um, but is it true? I mean, yes, it is also true that, um, you know, actually, depending on what part of Russia the soldiers were from, they uh, will have a different accent. Uh, Moscow, or they have, uh, you know, very thick accents, from what I recall. Um, i fairly certain I could distinguish if someone was from Moscow or, you know, some other part of Russia. But in, at there, for some particular reason, they have a stronger accent. Uh, but it's not like there aren't actors in the... Um, in, in Ukraine that can't pull off a convincing Moscow accent. Um, and some people say that uh, their um, the army uh, is composed a lot of conscripts for the Russians. And I don't exactly believe that entirely. They had a substantial standing army as it was. Um, and you go, why would they lie about that? You know, it's basically to say, you know, war is a dark room. You never know what you might find if you walk in there. Um, you know, to, to the effect of Hitler said something like that. You know, a lot of people said stuff like that. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's very, very true. And um, the, it's face-saving for um, both sides by claiming that a lot of the Russians that are invading are conscripts. Therefore, they didn't choose to be in the army. Uh, they're simply forced to do so. Uh, it's face-saving for the Russians, because if they do bumble up things, and this is the whole part of, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you know, uh, the idea of an invincible army is an idea that they try to perpetuate. But no army is invincible. Uh, there's always, there's always going to be problems, there's always going to be POWs, there's always going to be this and that and the other. Um, so it's face-saving for the Russians to say that they're conscripts. Um, and then for the Ukrainian side, it's also saying, oh, look at the, how the evil Russians are forcing uh, young men to fight in the war, and we have to raise our arms up and anyone able to fight should fight for the Ukraine because of this horrible oppressor that is coming to get us um, so you know it works for, on both sides um, saying stories like that um, so that's a useful tool uh, in, in the propaganda apparatus and uh, you know really got to pay attention to things like that because it doesn't sound important but it is so uh i think the majority of the forces in ukraine are actually you know full-on like specifically trained soldiers and they're not conscripts but uh there probably is a few conscripts there just to add the legitimacy of that claim but i don't think most of them are there you they need to know what they're doing and, um, you know, the two sides of this story in the West, the Ukrainian version of what's happening is the one that's getting the most attention and, and is being propped up. And the Russian one, there's no way to look like the good guys if they're invading another country. I mean, George Bush had to pull off a few real big lies to uh, to justify his invasion of the of Iraq, and then he paid for it uh, for, you know, decade. He's going to pay for it for the rest of his life. That's going to be his legacy is the Iraq War. And, um, you know, there are reasons for doing things. And, uh, you know, I think the biggest reason, other than, you know, Ukraine being a nuisance to Russia, is that uh, it was economics. Uh, the world and the, the power of uh, nations was turning against Russia 
and Russia's hand was forced. Now, I'm not making excuses for them. I'm just saying that they have their reasons for going to do the things they're doing. And, uh, you know, there have been many a time where the Russian army was quite uh, barbaric and, uh, you know, a true tyrannical monster. Um, so they're not exactly the most believable people when you, they're being sent as peacekeepers or something like that. That, that kind of story is just not going to work. But, uh, you know, there were areas that, uh, could be made into peaceful areas that were not peaceful before because there were skirmishes with, uh, uh, Ukraine, Ukrainian militias and Russian backed, uh, uh, Ukrainian separatists and probably some Russians were in there too um, those areas could be made peaceful as in um, the need or the ability to uh, have small skirmishes is dismantled because the Ukrainian um, government was not capable of or and, and also lacked the desire to uh, quiet those areas and uh, with Russian occupation theoretically uh, that is one small part of justification although as I said I believe it's more of an economic thing uh, I think they want the entirety of the Black Sea they're so pissed off about uh, Turkey because they just don't like the Turks they, they really don't and they've got a lot of reasons for not liking them and, uh, you know, they essentially got away scot-free from, you know, insulting the Russian Federation and its army. And, uh, you know, they've uh, got to uh, do something about that. Or as if they can't do something about it today, 20 years from now, they'll be even less likely to be able to do anything about anything. Uh, because, you know, if you're unable to exercise your will then uh, in the future, it's only going to diminish even more. Um, and the world's an untrustworthy place, and the Russians do have a right to feel as though that uh, um, there are forces out there that, uh, that want to get them. So their paranoia is not really paranoia, because it's justified, because it's the truth. Uh, from their point of view, anyway. And... I just think the West should have tried a little harder to uh, improve the economy of uh, the Russians. Um, maybe too much of their money would have went into the military. Maybe, you know, there was some old feuds. Um, people from the old regimes that um, do not and can never like each other. And it won't be for a hundred years before those sort of hatreds are or watered down. Um, but I mean, this is a whole new can of worms that they just opened up, so uh, I don't know. I have to see where things go. Uh, but uh, it's a very fascinating subject. Anyway, I'll talk to people later. Have a good one.